right. Yeah. Okay. All right, brothers and sisters. Uh, I mean, I'm sorry, brothers. This is a this is the brothers' class today. I was thinking it was the open class, but you know, uh, it's not. But we're gonna go ahead, nevertheless, with the class. Um, I mean, I sit, I sit in some good classes this week. I sit in a uh, Bible class this Wednesday night, brother. Free edge taught a good class, most definitely. I wasn't able to be in class, in class with Steve, but I know he taught a good class as well. But um, a simple class. This is one of these one sheet classes. It's not you know whole page, whole booklet. And the class is um, um, why is the truth so hard to accept? Why is the truth so hard to accept? And I'm gonna, I'm gonna read the Bible some of the some of the texts. It's gonna come out of uh, out of uh, Matthew. I'm sorry, Matthew 28. Is what we read in our hearing today because I want to get some some of uh, our thoughts to come out of this particular text in chapter 28 we read the full text we read the full text in in worship uh, as we remember the Lord in uh, Matthew 28 before I go on though I've been I've been hearing this word in my mind in my mind you know, I know many of you have heard it. Monolith. Monolith. Many of you have heard that word, heard that word? Monolith. And I've heard that word so much that I looked it up to see what it meant. Because, I mean, I mean, people people say that we're not a monolith. I think Stephen might be, he might be pretty, pretty, pretty swift with those kind of words. People say that we are monoliths. Some people say we are not a monolith. So, you know, you hear people say stuff, you're like, you wonder, what does it mean? What does that mean? So... I had to look it up to make sure that we as a church understand what people are saying to us because words mean something, you know. In the world, they use a thing called word magic. You know, it's word magic. What it's, what it's, meant, to, what it's meant to do is to throw us off or to keep them in line. So we don't understand it, but what it is is word magic, and we want to make sure that we kind of incorporate some of these things. Monolith. Now, I spelled it M-O-N-O-L-I-T-H, monolith. And there are kind of two separate meanings to this. It, it, it has a meaning that says it's a, a large, single, upright block of stones, especially one shaped into or serving as a pillar, a monument. They use that word, that word to, to mean it's like, if you have pillars in a, in a building, you got different buildings holding up a porch. It is, they use that word to, to, to help us to understand that, that it is a block that holds up a structure. But when they use, it, when they use that word in respect of people, it uses us, it uses it in a sense that we're a block of people. As blacks are a block of people. And as that, we should all think alike, which I don't think is true at all. With Javier in here. <laughs> See, we can't think alike that way. As Christians, we should all think alike and be a monolith in a good way because we have God's word. But when one starts to go astray to the left or to the right, then we can't think that way. So that 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 that, uh, that, that thought of being a monolith, we should be independent, not a block that thinks as a whole, because people can move us about like cattle that way. We should be independent. If the cattle move this way, we should move this way. Because, you know, we're Christians. That's what, that's what God has taught us. That we can't move with the group. Because Jesus contradicted all man. That's brother taught the lesson. So, so let me go into this lesson. I just want to throw that out there. Because it all blends into the lesson. And why is, why is it that truth is so hard to accept? The 11 in Matthew 28 right here, we see... But it talks about after Jesus was raised up, he'd already told them many times, he'd already told them many times that this was going to be his mission, that he was going to die and he was going to uh, be buried and he was going to rise again. He continued to tell his disciples this. And when we look at verse number 16 in Matthew 28, 16, the Bible says, then the eleven disciples went away into Galilee, into a mountain where Jesus had appointed them. And this is a good thing, that they went where Jesus had appointed them to go. It says, 
And they saw, and when they saw him, they worshiped him, but some doubted. Verse 18 said, And Jesus came and spanked unto them, saying, All power is given unto me in heaven and in earth. Go ye therefore and teach all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Ghost, teaching them to observe all things whatsoever I have commanded you. And lo, I am with you always, even until the end of the world. Amen. This is powerful for Jesus after being with these men three years and so, teaching them, being with them, seeing them, touching them, him knowing, them knowing one another, just like we know one another. And then him dying and then being resurrected and being, in, the, in a sense, as a ghost to them. As a ghost to them. We look at verse number 17. And this is where the focus that I want to go at right here is that. And when they saw him, they worshipped him, but some doubted. Some doubted. This is not something new in, in human nature that we doubt. If, if, and I'm going to get to to my lesson that I have written down, I'm going to follow it. But if Javier told Robert something that Javier had seen, something that was magnificent, and told, told Robert, Robert said, man, that's unbelievable. But then you told me, and then I would probably say, man, I don't even believe that. I don't believe it. But Javier saw it with his own eyes. He saw it with his own eyes. He saw it. He saw it. So my unbelief doesn't make it an unbelief because he saw it. I just don't believe it. This word doubt is a word that, it, 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 it's a word that, 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 that doesn't mean I don't believe. It's a word that means one wavers. G1365. One, it's it's to mean that in doubt or wavering. And I think every Christian on earth has some doubt at some point. At some point. Because this is why we come together and worship on Sunday. Because during the week, we see so much to throw us off as midweek devotion. And by the time midweek devotion comes, we, it, when it, we're drawing further away, we, we get right back on track. By the time Sunday comes around, if we didn't draw, if we didn't fell off a little bit, we come right back. And grow, so God had a plan. He had a plan. I did, I did want, I want to read, I want to read this scripture because we got men in here right now, but I forgot the day was, a, the day was their class too. But the heart says something when we talk. If you're preaching or you're teaching or you're saying to somebody, they're saying something in their heart. Look at this unbelievable. Look at this guy. What is he saying? The heart is saying that. The heart is saying, let's look at Genesis. Because I wanted, I wanted to go here and say this right quick. Because I wanted to say it when I was when our sisters were in here so they could hear it. Because do you have conversations? Do you have conversations at home with your wife? And sometimes they don't believe what you're saying. And you're telling them something you've experienced, you've been through. And they're saying, you know, well, people of a different age group believe things differently. Just talking to Stephen for a minute ago. They believe things a little differently than how, than how we believe. Stephen, how, well, how you too, Javier? Because you, you, you're in that millennial young group. <laughs> but look at, look, at, uh, look, at, look, at, look at Genesis 17. You're not, you're not able to do that when it comes to this book, though, no matter what age group you're in. Yeah, you can have your thought of what you feel is right, but in this, in this, when we're looking at this book, that thought you have, God is marking that thought. He said, God, you're unqualified. That, that thought is unqualified. It's unqualified. Look at, look at Genesis 17, 17. And I just want to use this. Then Abraham fell on his face and laughed and said in his heart, Shall a child be born unto him that is a hundred years old? And shall Sarah, that is ninety years old, bear? And Abraham said, said unto God, Oh, that Isaac might live before thee. I mean, Ishmael. Ishmael. He didn't believe 
that the angel, what the angel told him about his wife barren, and he didn't believe that he could produce it. He didn't believe. I mean, if the angel come to you and tell you that, you know, I've, I've been in, I've been in, I've been in, I've been in a uh, deja vu sometime before in my life. I don't know if you have deja vu. Y'all ever had deja vu? Where you, where you were, you were in a moment where you said, "This happened to me before." You know what I'm saying? I've been through the same thing. Then you wait for something else to happen. You say, "Oh, it happened just like that." Like, wow. I don't know. I let the way the the, the, the mind is, is wired. A guy told me one night, I'm, I'm a truck driver, right? And this night, I forget where we were. We were, I think I was working for Walmart. I was in one of the DCs, and we, everybody was in the window waiting to get their load. This guy came in, he said, Man, I, I fell asleep behind the wheel in Nacogdoches, and I went down the street, and I woke up, and I was still driving. I don't know how you do that one. That was on the side of real unbelief. You fell asleep? An angel grabbed the wheel for you? Oh, are you a Christian? You know, he wasn't a Christian. So I'm, 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 I'm like, I'm really, I'm really like, well, it's kind of hard for me to believe, dude. And you still standing here, you fell asleep behind the wheel, and you, and you drove down the road, and you still living? And you got here? Most people crash. Angel of the Lord would have to take the wheel from you and start driving. Amen. So you know some things that some things that in the in the realm to me are, okay well this one right here I'm put in this category over here <laughs> and then I'm doing my salvation you know we talked I believe we talked this was years ago I forget what we talked about after that we talked about God a little bit after that you know he wasn't a Christian but so so look at look at uh we looked at Genesis 17 look at Genesis 18 so when you're preaching people are saying this in their mind people are you know what I'm saying I preach out. You know what you're talking about. You know what you're talking about. This is what they're saying in their mind. Genesis 18 and verse number 12. It says, Therefore Sarah laughed within, her, within herself, saying, After I am waxed old, shall I have pleasure? Shall I have pleasure, my Lord being also old? And the Lord said unto Abraham, Wherefore did Sarah laugh, saying, saying, shall I of a surety bear a child which am old. So the Lord is going to she's going to deny that she that she laughed. But just a few verses down, look at verse 15. Then Sarah denied, saying, I laugh not. But she was afraid and he said, Nay, but thou didst laugh. So so she laughed because she said this angel here, he, he crazy. He don't know what he's talking about. She was in disbelief, but then she, she had a child. She had a child. So, so, why is the truth so difficult to believe? We see in scripture that, that doubt or unbelief was not uncommon. Even when we see these early disciples being commanded to go and teach the word, teach the world. Some were in doubt. Some were in doubt. Now, if they didn't do what the Lord said do, if they didn't meet and they didn't go up here where the Lord said go up here and be at that particular place when he said, we would have never got the gospel. Mm -hmm. So, in other words, if we don't go to church, if we don't go to church, we're, gonna, we're not going to get what the Lord got to give us. Amen. Now, this is, this is, this is, would have been beautiful, but it's gonna be. It's, it'll be right there. Javier put it up. He'll de he'll de he'll deduct anything from it that's not supposed to be there. He'll come and say, "But it's not supposed to be in there." You know, we're gonna take it out. But let me say this: If you don't go to church, you're gonna miss your blessing. Amen. You and I both, we're gonna miss our blessing. There's a lot of things that 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 I believe. And I'm using myself. I'm using Keith. I'm not using nobody else. I left unfinished in life. Mm -hmm. A lot of things undone. You know. That I'm, that I'm not going to get punished from for. I remember my house when I left my house. Half half of it needed to be painted. Oh, man, I get to it. I get to it. You know, you just, you know, there's some things I left undone in that house. But it's not and void now. It's gone. It's, it's past. Mm -hmm. There are a lot of things we leave undone. But this is one thing we, can't, we cannot leave undone in this life. Mm -hmm. We got to be able to worship God. Mm -hmm. And, you know, I think that everyone gets off track sometimes. 
But you got to come to church. That's what puts you back on track. Nobody gets off track and misses, and misses a job, misses a day at work. You know what? You're going to go to work. You're going to take, you got a stomach ache. You're going to take some Pepto. You're going to take some Tums. But you're going to go to work. You're going to be oh, man, my stomach hurt. You're going to push the button on the, on the machine. You keep on making that part. You all right, Bob? Yeah, I'm going to be all right, Bob. Hmm. You're going to go to work because you know your life depends on that money. At the end of the week, you got to have to pay them bills. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. But at the, end of the, at the end of the day, when that angel is knocking at your heart strings, say, come on. You're not going to say, I'm not ready. You're not going to say, you're not going to be able to do it. So we're going to use one particular gentleman right here in this lesson. Not to say that he's the only one that had doubt out of the group. But we're going to use this one particular gentleman. Peter was in this group of doubters. And Thomas, we'll, we'll go back to Thomas. We see through Peter's life, he had challenges. He, de he denied the Lord thrice, three times. Let's go to Matthew 26. Go ahead, bro. Go ahead, Javier. I just want to mention the term. We're talking about doubting. Uh, mm. In Genesis 17, uh, where Abraham laughed. Mm -hmm. And verse 19 says, And God said, Sarah, thy wife shall bear thee a son indeed. God shall call his name Isaac, and I will establish my covenant with him for an everlasting covenant, and with his seed after him. Mm -hmm. As for Ishmael, I have heard thee. Behold, I have blessed him. I will make him fruitful, mm -hmm. and multiply him exceedingly. For princes shall he beget. I will make him a great nation. My covenant will I establish with Isaac and Sarah, which Sarah shall bear unto thee at this set time in the next year. <coughs> and he left off talking with him, and God went up. From Abraham. So he gives them promises. Mm -hmm. and Isaac. The covenant's going to be with him. Twelve princes will come from Ishmael. Because he heard him. He heard his request concerning Ishmael. But he's not going to give him the covenant with Ishmael. So the doubt with Abraham is he's looking at it carnally. Mm -hmm. Looking at his age. Sarah's age. That's why he has doubt. Yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, the eleven disciples when they met Jesus in Matthew 28, they had doubt because they were looking at it carnally. Because when, when, when men die, they don't really come back to life and talk to you mm -hmm. after it's so long. Mm -hmm. So the doubt with Abraham and Sarah is that they're looking at their flesh, not believing God's word. They're looking, the disciples are looking at death in, in Matthew 28. They're not looking at what before them was being said. Mm -hmm. That's why they, the word doubt means to waver. You know, in Greek, it's, it's talking about to waver. Mm -hmm. is, this, is this him or not? So when it comes to what's happening today with the church and it's being closed, they're listening to the elders and the preachers and they're looking at them as God and they're looking at words like precaution. Uh, they're looking at the news. So doubt and fear is taking hold of them. Mm -hmm. So they don't understand the other scriptures. They don't understand the protection of God. They are like blind leaders leading the blind. Mm -hmm. They're all falling to the ditch. And so it's it's the carnal mind. It's not having the boldness to stand up and, mm -hmm. and truly seek for God that is uh, keeping them shackled. Their own fear is keeping them shackled. And um, mm -hmm. that's the thing that they need to believe. They need to believe mm -hmm. that God will commune with you mm -hmm. if you submit to him and gather together. Mm -hmm. See, that's the scripture. Gather, gather together. Yeah. Mm -hmm. But God's going to show mercy to whom he shows mercy. You know, so I don't know who he's going to show mercy to. But the instruction is still together and they mm -hmm. need to come with a broken and contrite heart. Mm -hmm. Amen. That, that's a good. That's a good thought to 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 add uh, to uh, uh, the lesson. Uh, is, I mean, I, I appreciate the way you broke it down into, you know, the physical and uh, for us, they didn't believe their age. They didn't believe that they were going to be able to produce a child, uh, and uh, and in the other in the other sense that they that the disciples never seen a man come back to life like that. 
But um, um, that is a challenge, you know, that that we as physical beings have. No matter who we are, you know, we're still in the flesh, Amen. and then we still have that challenge. You know, I mean, I'm 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 at an age I've seen a lot of things in my life, and there's still some things that are so hard to believe. Of course, I believe this right here without a doubt. Amen. I believe this without a doubt. But some things somebody tell me, you know, I'm like, okay, yeah, man, that might have happened, yeah, okay. <laughs> you know, some things, you know, you got to filter through. And, and uh, you know, some of the things that I, I see now, you know, I think you remember the, the lesson where Jesus talked about those that were dull of, of hearing. He said they, they, see with they, they see with their ears and they hear with their eyes. Mm -hmm. so, so it is up to us. It, it's, in, it's in perfect for it, every person to be able to use every ability that God gives them to understand and to see. Amen. It is. Because how are you going to how are you going to face this cunning and, and, and this deceitful and wicked devil? Mm -hmm. How? Well, you're in trouble. If you cannot use the abilities that God gives you to see with your eyes and hear with your ears, and not the opposite, and use what's in the middle to to I'll give you I'll give this I'll give you this for instance right here. Let me, I'm asking y'all the question. I'm asking y'all the question because people in suits, the devil's not going to come to us in a red uniform <laughs> with the tail and flames. Oh, that's 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 too obvious. Mm -hmm. That's too obvious. How is how is he going to come? He's going to come. He's going to smell good like you. Mm -hmm. He's going to smell good like you. He's going to dress like Javier, Suave mm -hmm. Bole. He's going to dress like Javier. Yeah. He's going to dress like Robert, mm -hmm. Suave Bole. Yeah. And he's going to talk just like you talk. Yeah. But then you got to watch what he say. Mm -hmm. first, what's that? First John 4 says, believe not every spirit, but try the spirit. So, so is this, is Brother, Brother Olin said something uh, Sunday, a Sunday night? No, it, was Sunday, it was Wednesday. He said, do not, do not Sit in your car because it's cold outside. Obviously, people are doing it. People are dying. Do not sit in your car in the garage with the car on, because mm -hmm. in, in the door in the door closed, mm -hmm. be, and sitting there try to stay warm and go to sleep because you won't wake up because mm -hmm. that carbon dioxide will put you to sleep. Yeah. It's like sleeping gas. Yeah. Mm -hmm. It'll put you to sleep. You you shouldn't be able to stand it, but if you fall asleep, you know you know you're helpless. I mean, you just you're just gonna yeah gonna go. That's it. Carbon dioxide. Now, this is what I'm saying is so important because if you turn gas on in your house mm -hmm. and that's all you got to warm your house up with and you got the heaters on, you got the heaters on on top of the oven, can you go to sleep with that on? Mm -hmm. I'm asking y'all. Mm -hmm. Yes, you can. Yeah, you can. Yes, you can. Yeah, you can. You can sleep all day long. Go to the country and ask a lot of folks who, yeah. who, live, who live with propane and gas. They yeah. sleep all the time with all it on. Yeah. And they still live and walking. Yeah. But let me, let, me, let, me, let, me, let me tell you this right here. Somebody on TV tell you that those that propane, gas, and carbon dioxide will kill you if you sleep, mm -hmm. they just lied to you. Mm -hmm. Pre you know, put some, put some reference, put some other information with that. Mm -hmm. Ventilated areas. That's it. Ventilated areas. My brother, my brother in Louisiana, I was just talking to him. And we went up there to visit uh, last year. And I didn't realize that he had propane. He had a propane tank outside the back of his house. Mm -hmm. He'd been living with propane ever since he'd been there. He ain't dead yet. That's right. <laughs> and I thought... And, and, and he sleep with it yeah. on. Yeah. Got a space heater. My yeah. mom got a space heater in the house. Yeah. A space heater in the house. I went over there and worked on it. That space heater warmed the whole house up. Yes. The whole house. Mm -hmm. But I'm coming to you. No, you good, yeah. I'm coming to you. <laughs> I got an old house. I'm going to get some gas running to a line, and I'm going to put a space heater there when it get cold. Mm -hmm. That space heater in his room with gas. She ain't dead. Go ask her. She's still over there living. Mm -hmm. So somebody lying. Somebody lying. So people on TV on the Green Monster will tell you stuff like that, and you'll believe it. Mm -hmm. It's not true. Amen. The carbon dioxide will kill you, but the propane yeah. will not kill you. Amen. Right. All I'm saying is, why is the truth so hard to accept? Hmm. There are people having knockout fights just because of that one issue right there. Mm -hmm. That one issue right there. Mm -hmm. Brother Javier, hold on, give, me, give me a minute. That mm -hmm. one issue, knockout fights in the family, separating families. Then you ask yeah. one of these people that own these companies, does misinformation cause people to waver? They don't tell you no. That's another lie because mm -hmm. you just tell your people to say that. Yeah. 
Because there's some big reason maybe your company owns another company that owns another company that 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 owns that that that, that owns uh maybe gasoline, they don't want you to use propane. Whatever. Mm. You see mm. what I'm saying? Mm. They got mm. you to say that. Mm. So so I'm saying that believe the truth. Mm -hmm. Don't fight it. It's always gonna be true, no mm -hmm. matter what. It's okay to wave a little bit and go get your information, come back and say, Yeah, you're right. You're right. Mm -hmm. Um, yeah, you got you got a comment. We're gonna move right on. Yeah, good point. Good. Just added on the comment on the carbon dioxide. Uh, in uh, 10 Kings 4 40. Mm -hmm. uh, it says, uh, So they poured out for the men to eat, and it came to pass as they were eating of the pot. They cried out and said, Oh, thou man of God, there's death in the pot. <laughs> <laughs> I remember. <laughs> they could not remember. eat thereof. Mm -hmm. He said, Then bring meal. He cast it into the fire. Mm -hmm. And he said, pour out of the people that they may eat so there was no harm. Mm -hmm. So that word uh, meal is defined as flour. Mm -hmm. Brine flour. And in order to uh, consume it. So mm -hmm. when it comes to carbon dioxide, you know, there's doctrine that is like carbon dioxide. Mm -hmm. that if you inhale it, you'll die spiritually. Yeah. Amen. So, Amen. You know, and you'll stay dead because it's it remains in you, but mm -hmm. you know, the physical carbon dioxide goes in and it it kills you. But, uh, Amen. Amen. The spiritual, Amen. The spiritual going in. Death yeah. In the pot. Amen. Amen. But you know, it was death in the pot, I guess, because they, cause they had, cause the Lord had to get to get uh uh. I forgot who it was to put, to put something else in it to change the, the mixture of it. Mm -hmm. You know, change it up. You know. And gas is gas is odorless. I got I know a guy he worked for Intex. You yeah. Know, I mean, he worked for, not Intex anymore. Center Point. Mm -hmm. He can tell you anything about the, about <laughs> gas, bro. He can tell you anything about getting named the chemicals and everything. Mm -hmm. Hey, but they put this in there because you can smell it. Because if not, it'll, you can't smell it. It'll kill you. Yeah. Hey, we right. talk about that stuff all the time. I was like, okay, man, you you know, you know a lot of stuff, but you still need to come to church. <laughs> yeah, amen. <laughs> okay, he'd have been here before. He'd have been here before. Yeah. Well, let's move man. on. Yeah. yeah, he's a good guy. Mm -hmm. You know, he's a good guy. You know. Okay. Uh, so. So Peter was in this group. We was going to Matthew 26. We was going to Matthew 26. I believe Brother Ozan said, you can't deny what the Lord has already said is going to happen. Mm -hmm. And he told Peter, you're going, to, you're going to deny me three, mm -hmm. three times before the cock crow. Mm -hmm. And you know what? No, mate, Peter, you can pray all you want to and say that you didn't do it. You ain't going to do it. <laughs> but Peter, Peter, you're going to do it. Look at verse 69. Mm -hmm. Uh, 26 verse 69. Now Peter was Peter sat without in the palace, and the damsel came unto him, saying, "Thou also was with Jesus of, of Galilee." But he denied before them, before them, before them, and saying, "I know not what thou sayest." And when he was gone out into the porch, another maid saw him and said oh. unto them. That there were three, I mean, that there were the, this fellow was also with Jesus of Nazareth. And again, he denied with an oath, I do not know the man. And after a while came unto him, they that stood by and said to Peter, Surely thou art one of them, for thy speak betrayeth thee. Then began he to curse and to swear, saying, I know not the man. And immediately the cock crow, <laughs> the cock crow. And Peter remembered the words of Jesus, whence, which said unto him, Behold, the cock crow, thou shalt deny me thrice. Oh, and he went out and wept bitterly. Oh, I would have did the same thing. Yeah. I would have went out and Amen. wept bitterly too. Yes, sir. But you know, Peter, it's one, one thing is unique about Peter that I can say about Peter. His faith wavered on many occasions, but he never left. Amen. He never left. This guy never left. You know, looking at this guy, and this lesson would do me a lot of good because he never left. Mm -hmm. He never left, man. He never left. He was where the Lord told him to be when it was time for him to be there. Amen. But now we're going to look at some more of him, though. Look at this guy, Thomas, in John 20. Mm -hmm. John 20. Now, it's another Thomas in here. I mean, I'm not, it's, it's, we're gonna, wait, I'm not going to go there right now. I'm going to get to that point. Look at John. And see, I'm encouraged by these brothers that teach because I follow how they teach. I've, I've, I've seen a lot of older teachers teach in my time. 
brothers that used to come to Highland Heights to teach, brother. But, you know, I had to recalibrate. I had to recalibrate when I came over here because my brothers taught a lot. They, they taught, but they taught differently. You mm -hmm. guys teach different. Mm -hmm. You know, hobby I teach different. Mm -hmm. And I kind of take notes from both of you guys, mm -hmm. you know, Brother Giles and, and people I see I teach here, Kevin. Yeah, I know. You know, and I, and I take, you know, I see the way y'all teach, mm -hmm. and I take notes. And so if you you see me teach, you ought to say, that brother teaches kind of like I teach, because I got that from you. <laughs> I got it from you. Now I got this from Kevin right here. Mm -hmm. yeah. Want to get fired up? I'm ready to go. <laughs> Amen. So Kevin ready to go, boy. He ready to go. <laughs> but now I, I got to give it to him. He's grown. He's grown a lot. Amen. You know, and that's, yeah, you know, that's what we need. You start teaching, and, you, mm -hmm. and then, then you, uh, and you're ready to roll. Um, 20 and 24, John 20 and 24. Bible says, but Thomas, one of the twelve, called Didymus, was not with them when Jesus came. The other disciples therefore said unto him, We have seen the Lord. But he said unto them, Except I shall see him, see, see his hands, the mm. prints of the nails, and put my fingers into the prints of the nails, and thrust my hand into his side, I will not believe. See, so people always, you know, people tell you stuff, and I just mentioned that earlier when I, when I used that thing. I mean, I said, you know what? I'm not going to believe that Javier showed me. And the example that I used earlier, he told you something, I'm going to tell you, tell Javier to come show me. Uh -huh. Huh? You know what I'm saying? Uh -huh. Because that's, <laughs> that's unbelief. I want to see it for myself. But he's not denied because he, cause, cause he, didn't, you know, because he didn't believe mm -hmm. right then. Because mm -hmm. he was there the, the next time when the Lord came. So he wasn't there at church that time. I won't say that, but he was. But he was dead. He was. He missed something. Mm -hmm. But the next time he was there, so, so, his faith was wavering at that particular time because the Lord had already told him that hey, he said that he, he was there. He had to be. He's he's one of the disciples. He's one of those those those, those uh, apostles, right? Mm -hmm. So he should have been there, part of the eleven in Matthew right. twenty eight. Mm -hmm. So some of them had doubt. We know that Peter had doubt. So Thomas probably was one that had doubt too. That the Lord said He was gonna come, He was gonna be raised again from the dead. Now, what would you do if you was there? Hmm. And the Lord said He was gonna come back again. Hmm. Now, if any one of us said that today, and said, "Hey, man, you know what? I'm gonna use Steve." He said, "Man, you know what? Next week, I'm gonna die. I'm gonna die uh, next Friday, <laughs> but by Sunday, I'm gonna be back <laughs> preaching." And we go to his funeral Saturday, oh. and he come back. And, <laughs> oh, you know, we'd be blown away, right? Oh. He said he was going to come back, man. He said, <laughs> we know it's not going to happen. Mm -hmm. But but at the same time, he's saying it. We'd be like, man, you know what? That's what, that's what? That would be what we would say. And it's funny for me to even think about it. Yeah. Because I know it wouldn't happen. But this is what they. This is what they. This is what they. This was what they were going through at the time. Mm -hmm. And so he said he wanted to see some proof. Uh, Twenty four. And through uh, 26 says, and after eight days, again, his disciples were within, and Thomas, and Thomas with them. Then came Jesus, the door being shut, and stood in the midst and said, Peace be unto you. Mm. Then said he to Thomas, Reach hither thy fingers, and behold my hands, and reach hither the hands and thrust into my side mm. and be not faithless but believing and Thomas answered and said unto him my Lord and my God Jesus said unto him Thomas because thou hast seen me thou hast believed blessed are they that have not seen and yet have belief mm. see we haven't seen but we believe and we when we tell people when we tell people about Jesus, we tell them with belief because we're seeing it. Verse thirty says, "And many other signs truly did Jesus in the presence of the disciples, which are not written in this book, but these are written that ye might believe that Jesus is the Christ, the Son of God, and that believing ye might have life through His name." Amen. So, so that's Thomas, and we see Peter, and we're gonna look at Peter again. You know, we Peter also. Shows us our immortality in his life. Mm -hmm. Peter slipped up. Peter slipped up and got reprimanded mm. in in Galatians. Mm -hmm. He slipped up with the Gentiles because 
I'm going to say this word. Some people might not like He became a hypocrite that day. Yeah. He became a hypocrite that day, eating with Gentiles. But when certain Jews saw him, he refrained. Mm. He refrained. Peter get Peter get caught Peter got caught up in a lot of stuff. Mm -hmm. Look at look at Genesis I mean Galatians twelve and twelve. I'm um, wait a minute, two and twelve, I'm sorry. There is no Galatians twelve and twelve. Mm -hmm. I just threw that by y'all to see if y'all were aware. <laughs> y'all aware? Galatians twelve, two and twelve. Y'all you know, y'all know the story, y'all can read it later. You know, there's something y'all can y'all can take from it. Mm -hmm. But I got some other scripture I want to read. For before that certain came from James, he did eat with the Gentiles. But when they which they were come, he withdrawed and separated himself, fearing them that were of the circumcision. Mm. So, so there's a little hypocrisy that eased out of Peter. Mm -hmm. But Peter still did not leave. He was reprimanded by Paul. He still mm -hmm. did not leave mm -hmm. God's body. Amen. He still didn't leave. Still showed up where he was supposed to show up. Mm -hmm. Peter showed weakness, but also showed strength. Matthew 16. Matthew 16. Sixteen and verse number thirteen. You know, like Peter, because he was the one who would, would speak up. He was the one who would speak up a lot. Yeah. When others wouldn't, he would speak up. He was, he was bold like that. Mm -hmm. I mean, each one of us could say that we have a certain quality. Mm -hmm. You know, if if if, if it's uh, I could I could look at everybody at the table and say what, what quality each one of y'all have. Mm -hmm. for, for me, you might say you have another quality, but I would say that you have. A, Certain quality. Mm -hmm. When Jesus came into the coast of Caesarea Philippi, he asked his disciples, saying, Who do men say I that I, the Son of Man, am? And they said, Some say that thou art John the Baptist, <laughs> some Elijah, and others, Jeremiah, are one of the prophets. Now he asking his disciples. They should have the right answer. They've been with him. Mm -hmm. This one they, they should get right. They should get this one right. Mm -hmm. He said, He said unto them, but whom say ye that I am? And Simon Peter answered and said, Thou art the Christ, the Son of the living God. Mm -hmm. And Jesus answered and said unto him, Blessed art thou, Simon Bar-Jonah, who flesh and blood had not revealed it unto thee, but my Father which is in heaven. So he revealed in something that the Lord has given him from heaven. He's saying what the scriptures say. But it's going to be something he's going to say that the scriptures ain't going to say, even as the scriptures are going to repeat it mm -hmm. later on. Mm -hmm. But he's saying what the scriptures said. He said, from heaven, and I say unto thee that thou art Peter, and upon this rock I will build my church, and the gates of hell shall not prevail against it. And I will give unto thee the keys of the kingdom of heaven, and whatsoever thou shalt bind on earth shall be bound in heaven, and whatsoever thou shalt loose on earth shall be loosed in heaven. Amen. Then charged his disciples that they should tell no man that he was Jesus the Christ. So now he Tell them, hold that, and don't tell anybody but who I am. Now, we go right over to the next chapter, Matthew 17, 1 through 9. And here's Peter again. And after six days, Jesus taking Peter, James, and John, his brother, and bringing them up unto a high mountain apart, and was transfigured before them, and his face did shine as the sun, and his raiment was white as snow. He said, And behold, there appeared unto him Moses and Elijah talking with him. Then answered Peter and said unto, the, unto, unto Jesus. Now see, now Peter finna get out of character now. See, he finna say something stupid now. But the Lord and I already, and Lord already told him a few days earlier. You know, we just read it. But now he gonna say something that's not, that the Lord not gonna give him. And this is what we got to know when people say stupid stuff like, you, 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 man, you don't need to, you don't need to, all you got to do is confess the Lord mm. and come into your heart. No, nope, mm. not in the Bible. Mm. You can go to any church you want. It don't make no difference, baby. <laughs> not in the Bible. It's not in Scripture. No, well, that's the thing that, that's the thing that gets me. That's the thing that gets me when, when a Christian says something and agrees with that, that he's weak because he's not being been reading this Bible. Because there's no way I'm gonna agree with somebody in in he used Kroger. I'm gonna use H E B. I go to H E B a lot more. We use Kroger. Right. In H E B and they say, Hey man, where you been? How you been doing, man? Why don't you come over here and go to church with us? 
I said, now nah, you heard about the Church of Christ? It's in the Bible, man. You know, give me scripture, man. You know, everything. Run it, run it, bomb, boom, boom, boom. Romans 16, 16, Christ says it's going to build this church, you know. Yeah. For you know it, man, y'all splitting ways. But you didn't tell the man the truth. There's no way you can lie if you love the Lord about something that you can't, you can't lie. And so, and so we know that we, we, we do things on the first day of the week. We take the Lord's Supper every week. Not once a, once a year, mm-hmm. every six months. And we don't use instruments and music. That's the one really people get baffled about. You got to be kidding. They can't believe. Y'all, y'all don't use instruments? That one really throws people off. And you know what I mean? It really shows doubt. That's just a simple thing. Now, we don't use instruments and music. Mm-hmm. And that's what I'm talking about, monolith. Now you should be a part of this block. Mm-hmm. See, you should be a monolith. Now you should be a part of this block. We use music. You see, that's when we start to separate ourselves from others. And so as black, as black, brown people, I use, I use brown and light brown people, you know, skin color is only outside. Mm-hmm. Yeah, now y'all remember the human tree? I told y'all about the human tree, that, that movie I saw, where this guy, they swabbed all these people in Brooklyn, because Brooklyn had, was so condensed with all the different ethnic groups of the world. They went and swabbed everybody, uh, Slava, and they took their DNA, and at the end of the movie, all these people, all these people <laughs> that they swabbed, they met in this park in New York, and they had the ground all marked off to different, different uh, not cities, but uh, countries. And then they had all the people there, and they, and they called their name off. They said, uh, so-and-so, you go stand over here. So-and-so, you go stand over here. And at the end, he told them, this is your native country. This is where you came from. Mm. They had a guy on there. He was black as this. Mm-hmm. And where, he, where they put him at was among white people. He said, them your people. Mm-hmm. <laughs> He was black as this right here. Yes, sir. Tell the truth. Yeah, DNA said you white. Tell the truth. You white. Your skin is black as them, but that's where you came from. Your people over there, mm. all of them was white. He looked around. He was like, <laughs> he was shocked. Mm. He was a monolith. You know what I'm saying? He was. He was a block. He thought he was a part of a block. Mm-hmm. I, you know, I, I can't. I can't get it when people try to put you in a group. Mm-hmm. There was a. There was a great writer. He's still alive. A black guy. He. I think he went to. He used to teach at MTI, MIT, and uh, he's still living. I forget his name. He had a documentary on him. He wrote a lot of books. He said when he was younger, when he was younger, they had these these different groups, these groups, black groups in the, in the school where he was a teacher. And uh, he was a black uh, teacher in the school. And they came, into his, they came into his office, and he was sitting at his desk, and they called him brother. And he slammed his hand like this. He said, don't ever call me brother. My name is Mr. So-and-so. Mm. He said, I'm not your brother. He mm. said, I'm Mr. So-and-so. Mike caught, address me as Mr. So-and-so. Because we got that, you know, people, we got that. Hey, what's up, brother? What's going on? You know, it's just automatic. Mm-hmm. Because of your skin color. That's a block. You're a block. You, you in it. Mm-hmm. You in it, I mean. Yeah, I'm your brother, Bob. Not Adam, but, you know, he heard about the church, you know. Have you heard about what Jesus did for us? And died for us. Mm-hmm. You started separating. You know, start separating yourself from that Baptist block, mm-hmm. that Methodist block, or whatever Amen. that is. You put yourself in another another category than them. So, but we see here that that where we stopped off at, Peter is in this group, and Peter's going to be the one that spoke, speaks out. I think I might have stopped at verse number four. Then answered Peter said unto them, said unto Jesus, Lord, it is good for us to be here. Mm-hmm. He says, if thou would let us make here three tabernacles, one mm-hmm. for thee, one for Moses, and one for Elijah. See, now Peter's doing his own thing. The Lord didn't say, get out of here, Peter. I'm kicking you out, man. You just, you just, you just made too many contradictions. Peter said what he had to say for, for, for the sake of us reading it. The Lord let him say it. And it's recorded. Verse 5 says, While he yet spake, behold, a bright cloud overshadowed them, and behold, a voice out of the clouds which said, This is my beloved Son, whom I am well pleased. Hear ye him. And when his disciples heard it, they fell on their faces and were so afraid. And Jesus came and touched them and said, Arise. And he, and he, and be not afraid. And when they had lifted up their eyes, they saw no man save Jesus only. 
Mm-hmm. Save Jesus only. Amen. And that's what we want. That's what we want to make sure we we have we have belief in and not doubt in. That's one example. Let me see what time look like. I want to make sure we got time. Um, go ahead, Javier. Oh, yeah, just, uh, when the same story in Luke. Luke yeah, Luke, okay. Uh, nine. Chapter 9, verse 28. Yeah. Uh-huh. And he mentions that the same situation with the mountain. He says, uh, let's see, uh, verse 32, verse uh-huh. 32, he says, But Peter and they that were with him were heavy with sleep. Sleep, uh-huh. uh-huh. And they were awake, mm. they saw his glory, and mm. the two men that stood with him. It came to pass, as they departed from him, Peter said unto them, these masters is good for us to be here. Let us make three tabernacles. Mm-hmm. Leave one for Moses and one for Elijah. It says not knowing what he said. Mm. So mm. He was still mm. he was still sleeping, and some people when they wake up, they they still the brain is not uh, clicking mm-hmm. how it's supposed to be. Mm-hmm. That word heavy. Um, there's another word for it. Mm-hmm. It's dull. The word dull is mentioned three times in the Bible. It's described as in the book of Matthew, for this people's wax grows. Wax grows means mm-hmm. thickened. Uh, dull means uh, heavily. Uh, so heavily is another word in Hebrew for the word dull, which is described as uh, stupid, slothful, mm-hmm. sluggish. Mm-hmm. So when it comes to his mind, it, that's, he was just thinking of what he was thinking, but he wasn't thinking, that was just not knowing what he said. Mm-hmm. And when Jesus was asleep on a boat, he knew exactly what was going exactly, on. Yeah. He process it real quick. Mm-hmm. What's going on? And he could quickly make a judgment. These guys lack like faith. Mm-hmm. You know, compared to Peter, he, he just spoke from his calm mind instead of a mind of faith. Amen. Mm-hmm. Amen. Amen. That that you know, we should follow Jesus. That that what you're saying, not Peter, in the sense that, you know, I think that uh, if, you know. If we sleep, we better get enough rest before we come in and start taking the ham, start teaching, you know, because uh, and then we're not going to let that pass in here, though. You know, we're going we're gonna to pull a brother aside and say, you know what, brother, we're going to be we'll be kind. We'll say, hey, brother, we need some salt. Hey, brother, that, uh, what you said up there, man, well, you, you sleep for me, you all right? You know, we're going we're gonna to correct it, you know? So the Lord corrected it, too, but, you know, he corrected it in the way that he should have corrected it. Mm-hmm. I want to go and look at this scripture right quickly. Thank you, Brother Javier. Amen. Matthew 13, because it's, it's no, it, it is no... It is no, uh, Jesus is no different from us because people don't believe him. This is all about him anyway because we're only just being messengers that are carrying the message. You know, the Bible talks about a prophet and not without honor to save his own country and in his own, in his own house, mm-hmm. so Matthew 13, 57. But I want to look at verse, verse 53. Verse 53, chapter 13, Matthew 13, verse 53. And it came to pass that when Jesus had finished these parables, he departed thence. And when he was come into his own country, he taught them in, the, in their synagogues, mm-hmm. insomuch that they were astonished and said, Whence has this man this wisdom of these mighty works? Is not this the carpenter's son? Is not his mother called Mary? And his brother James, and Jose, and Simon, and Judas, and his sisters, and are, I mean, are they not with us? Which then has this man all these things? And they were offended in him. Mm. But Jesus said unto them, A prophet is not without honor, save in his own country, and in his own house. Mm. Mm. And he did not many and he did not many mighty works there because of their unbelief. Mm-hmm. Man. So, Jesus, they were astonished at what he was saying. Mm-hmm. I don't understand why they're not astonished at what we're saying if we're saying what's true. Mm-hmm. They're astonished. They never heard this before. I never heard this on this wise before. <laughs> you know, so Jesus not already told us our, our people are not the people that we're going to talk to that we know. I know many of you talk about your people, you know, how many, how many, how many times you pray for people that are in your family that don't even believe you. You're a prophet in your own family. They That's don't right. believe you. I mean, if, right. they, if, they, if they believed you, they would come to the They don't believe Amen. you. 
Let, let, let me put let me let me let me say this mm -hmm. a little bit more solemnly. If you're married, and you got a wife, and you got a wife home. A lot of times they don't believe you. True and I, I say this, I say this many times, man. You know, I care about my family more than anybody. I'm gonna tell them the truth, and I'm gonna try to make them see the light. And sometimes I had to fight, fight, fight yeah. at the kitchen table. Mm -hmm. Sometimes I had to zip it up. But let me tell you something. Matthew 10, 32, and following. It, 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 it's right. It's still right. It's still right. I didn't even put that one in there, but I, I just thought about it. It's still right. He says that. Oh, my goodness. Here it is right here. Uh, verse 34. It says, Think not that I am come to send peace on earth. I come not to send peace, but a sword. For I am come to set a man at variance against his father, and a daughter against her mother, and a daughter-in-law against her mother-in-law. Mm. And a man's foe shall be of his own household. He that loveth father or mother more than me is not worthy of me. And he that loveth son or daughter more than me is not worthy of me. Mm. What I pray for is when I tell some, when I tell one of my family members, my daughters or something, and they don't believe me, I pray that they won't be shocked when the truth shows up. Mm -hmm. Because it's going to show up. All yeah. you got to do is just tell people, it's going to show up. Amen. Believe me. I tell my, I pray for my wife the same way. Just don't let them get home by it. Don't mm -hmm. let them get too shook up or whatever it is. Because I'm not nobody. I'm just telling you what I, you know, what I believe is true. Mm -hmm. And what I can read for myself. Mm -hmm. And what I see. You, you know, we don't agree with everything that everybody says. But um, it is what it is. I'm going to get ready to close. I'm going to get ready to close. But I got a few more little old nit bits on here. But I'm going to leave those out. Because I want to close on time. But I do want to say this right here. I want to go to this, this chapter here, chapter 13, Matthew chapter 13, Matthew chapter 13, 17, and it says, Matthew 17, wait a minute, I'm sorry, let me see, Matthew 13 and verse number 17, 13 verse number 17, verses 17, for verily I say unto you, that many prophets and righteous men mm. have desired to see these things which you see mm. and have not seen them and to hear and to and to hear those things which you hear and have not heard them so the things that we're talking about many before us didn't even know about these things mm -hmm. simple stuff like we believe not coming to church on the first day of the week mm -hmm. they didn't know that <laughs> they didn't know Jesus was going to die on the cross. Mm -hmm. They didn't know who he was. That's right. They didn't know who he was. They didn't know that we was going to have to take the loss up every first day of the week. Mm -hmm. You know, They didn't know that we, didn't, we weren't going to have to go back to Jerusalem three times a year no more. Mm -hmm. They didn't know. These, some of these men had more faith than we have. Mm -hmm. Because they lost their lives teaching about something they didn't even know about. Mm -hmm. Here we got it right here in our hands. Mm -hmm. We can tell people about it. And we got more ways to tell them about it. We got YouTube. We got you got email, you know, uh, and even new kids they got they got TikTok. I don't see nothing on there about TikTok about nothing like that. Mm -hmm. They'll probably ban you from TikTok. You put that on there. Mm. It's a Chinese company, by the way. They steal your information on the back end. Mm. So I'm just letting y'all know that. Mm. But uh, it's very popular. It's very popular. I see it on I see it on YouTube all the time. They have commercials on there. And sometimes I hey look I'm human man. I get stuck on the commercials too. The commercials in the middle. Yeah. When you look at YouTube, if you look at the YouTube, yeah. they got the little commercials up there. It's just like TV now. Yeah. Yeah. But let yeah. me tell you this. I've talked, to, I've talked to Javier. I've talked to Javier about this. And uh, they got other tubes now. Mm -hmm. They got Rumble. They got Rumble. They got, I got a list of them. I was going to give them to Javier. Rumble is like YouTube. Because YouTube bans people. Mm -hmm. They ban you for speech. And we see in a country where we should have free speech. You, uh, Rumble. It let your video play all day long, no commercials. Mm. Rumble, uh, mm. uh, they got. Uh, I think Javier probably knows some more. I'm gonna bring the list, but they got some. I listen. I listen to Rumble all the time. It plays just. It plays straight through. Mm. Little, no buffering. Plays straight through. Sometimes it'll stop. You have to start it over. But I, you can have, have a lot of videos on there. You can put stuff on that too as well. So, so we don't. We don't have to be. You know, beholden to one or two groups. Yeah. Uh, mega tech companies. We can also mm -hmm. use the other avenues. You know, to put our voices out. Verse 8 says, Hear ye therefore the parable of the sower. When anyone, when anyone hear the word of the kingdom 
and understand it not. Then cometh the wicked one, and catcheth away that which was sown in his heart. This is this is he which received seed by the wayside. You don't want the seed to come by the wayside, because we see many people come in and leave. Mm. Come in and leave. But he that receiveth the seed in the stony place is the same. Is the, is the same is he that bear it hear the word and anon which joy receive receive it. Yet has he not root in himself, but do it, but do it, but do it for a while. For when tribulation and persecution arise because of the word, by the by, by and by, he is offended. That's the one who leaves. He's offended. Verse 22 said, He also that receiveth seed among thorns is he that heareth the word and the cares of this world. And the deceitfulness of riches choke the word, and he becometh unfruitful. Don't we don't want to be that? Uh. That's the one that I see so many people fall into the little shiny, little shiny objects, gold, silver. It takes them away from the Lord. Uh -huh. I can have this right here, and it takes their mind. It takes their focus. It's not that you. It's not that you can't focus on it, but if it takes your focus completely away, you need to readjust. You need to recalibrate. There's something you need to do. You need to get rid of that thing. You need to find something else that to take your focus. But Jesus should be the priority of everything you got in your life. So he says, the verse, verse 23, this is the one I want to stop at. But he that receiveth seed unto, into the good ground is he that heareth the word and understandeth it, which also beareth fruit and bringeth forth some, some in hundredfold, some sixty, and some thirty. I'd rather be in the 30 group and be a good soul than not be in the group at all. Mm. And the 30 group is the last group. So, so, you know, some people who are 100, everybody ain't got to be a teacher. Well, nobody, everybody doesn't have to be a teacher. Everybody doesn't have to be uh, somebody that does something in church, but you can be a, a person that goes to church and supports everybody else. That's the one you can be. So if you're not coming to church, this is for us and we're going to close. If you're not coming to church, you need to come back. Mm -hmm. Just get up on Sunday and come to church. Mm -hmm. That's all. If you can't come on Sunday morning, come on Sunday night. Come on Sunday night. Everybody not closed. Amen. I mean, you know, like, like who was that? Elijah? Who thought he was the last prophet hiding yeah. in caves? Everybody not closed. Good point. Everybody not closed. We still got, we got, still got churches of Christ that are open, and we're one of them. So, so look, brothers and sisters, that's a, that's a, le that's a lesson. Amen. The Bible says when, when Christ comes back to earth, Luke 18 and 8, will he find faith on earth? And we know that I, I love you that must have seen. It's a small thing. You can drop it on the floor and you can lose it. But God, you see, if you have faith the, the size of a must see small, mm -hmm. you got that much. I dropped that thing and lose it. Mm -hmm. Oh, my God, I lost it. Mm -hmm. But you see, if you got that much faith, the grain of a must have seen. That much. That's all you need to see heaven. We see Peter. He, he wavered so many times. It's beautiful. And I don't think he don't miss heaven. I think Peter's going to be, gonna be yeah. there. He's going to yeah. be there. There's a lot more things that Peter did, but we know that uh, um, uh, that everybody here is a Christian. Not everybody, but we know that some that are, that, are, that are not Christians yet. But it's good that Marcus brings his child, baby, because they need to come and learn, you know, what the Lord said. And they're hearing at the same time. You don't think they're hearing. They're hearing. Amen. So, anybody got any prayers or prayer requests? Let me close. I'm sorry.